everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Joshua chapter 3, verse 17, as well as James chapter 3, verse 18. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word, Lord Jesus. Help us to understand your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Joshua chapter 3, verse 17. Now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. All right, and so it says, now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant, and you know, the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God that Israel carried with them, right? Remember the presence of God was to be um, atop the Ark of the Covenant in between the two cherubim. And the Ark of the Covenant is a markup of, of what the presence of God actually looks like in the heavenly realm, right? And so it says, now the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan. So that had to be a, a peaceful state of being, right? Because remember the peace that the Lord brings is regardless of circumstance. So they are in the water, right? Their circumstance is going through. They are amongst, you know, rapid waters being held back, right? But they're standing firmly on dry ground so they have peace regardless of circumstance why because their foundation is in the lord they are standing on the lord right not on their own efforts the only efforts they are making is stepping out on faith moving forward but they they can stand firmly on dry ground in the midst of the jordan that means that in the midst of their circumstances they are having peace in the midst of, of being surrounded um, by wilderness and rapid waters and not knowing exactly how the future was going to play out. Remember, these were the people who had been in the wilderness for the last 40 years, some of them, and some of them were young, um, below 40. And I want to say below 20 at the time when, when the Lord said that he wouldn't bring those people into the, um, into the promised land but these people were surrounded by circumstance right this is all they knew it was wilderness all they knew was was getting through from day to day right and so and knowing that the lord was on their side knowing that god was keeping them so they were passing through this jordan not only were they passing they were able to see the same type of miracle that their parents had seen some of them hadn't seen it because they were too young but they were able to see that miracle take place right of of holding back of waters right holding back um a wall of water while they walked across on dry ground just like their parents right and so god was doing this again he was giving them peace in the midst of it right in the midst of the situation it says now the priests bearing the ark of the covenant of the lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the jordan and all israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. So all the nation had completed the Passover um, of Jordan. And, and it, it, that is a lot of people, right? Remember they were probably into the millions um, by the time they were um, crossing the Jordan. We I don't know exactly the number, but I know it was a lot of them. So imagine having to hold that um, Ark of the Covenant firmly in the midst of the Jordan while all these people walk through right um and remember when the lord is with you you have nothing to fear you don't have to fear wearing out or getting tired or anything because god's presence is with you he is going to strengthen you he is going to keep you and so they had god's presence with them in the form of the ark of the covenant they were passing over dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the jordan 
All right, let me just read it all together one more time. Joshua chapter three, verse 17. Now the priest bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan and all Israel was passing over on dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. All right, this is completed today with James chapter three, verse 18. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Wow, that's a good completion today. And so it says, and a harvest of righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is what is right, right? What is um, something that is just due or justice, right? Something that is due to, to, to come to pass, right? And it, it, it's coming to pass. It's justice. It's just, it's right. And, and so it says a harvest of this thing of righteousness is sown in peace. So we, we know that, um, righteousness is something coming to pass. So it had to be planted, right? Just like we plant a seed of, of, you know, just peace towards our brothers and sisters. Maybe someone made you mad and you know what? You forgave them. You wiped it, wiped them, wiped the debt of it. You want to be forgiven. So you know what? I'm going to forgive my brother or my sister. So if you did a lot of that, so say maybe you had many enemies and you planted many seeds of righteousness, um, you, you're going to have a harvest of that righteousness, right? So, um, hey, you go around and you, you make amends with people and you, you do the right thing by people. And, and so over time, um, a justice is going to come to pass. A righteousness is going to come to pass. What is right? What is just do? And if you did a lot of it, you're going to have a harvest of righteousness. So, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace. All right, so it had it's sown under a certain condition, right? Because peace is is regardless of the circumstance, you're gonna go in and you're going to do it, um, knowing that hey, I'm gonna get a return on this. I'm gonna get a, a harvest of righteousness. So when God is transforming you and and doing a new thing in you, and you're going around planting these seeds of righteousness. And, and you're yielding this great harvest, it has to be done in peace, right? You can't um, sow a harvest of righteousness with discord, right? If, if I'm going to my brother and I'm saying, you know what, let's bury this hatchet. And I know that this has happened in the past. You can't say, but you know, you were wrong and you know, you did this or that. No, that's not sown in peace. You need to sow it in peace peace right knowing that a harvest of righteousness is going to be coming so it says by those who make peace so it's not just a peace that's going to happen instantly right it's a peace that has to be made right sometimes you got to force a thing right it, even though um you you may want to um act a certain way around certain people it this is a peace that is going to be made so it's going to take effort. It is going to take you um, striving to enter into that rest, right? So at when this um, scripture is conflated with Joshua chapter three, you can see this so nicely um, coming together. Um, Joshua with this being a harvest, right? Okay, so this is a harvest of righteousness. Um, this These young people were the people who were with Joshua and Caleb, right? They were the ones of faith. They were the ones of righteousness. They, um, they, their, their, their harvest was coming in, right? So they were able to enter into the promised land. This was a harvest of righteousness because Joshua and Caleb had done what was right when they went out and spied the land. They they saw that it was good and they came and brought back a good report, right? That was righteous. They had faith. They saw what God saw, right? They didn't see the bad. They saw what God saw. God saw the the potential, the beauty. Um, I'm going to be with you. My presence is going to be with you, right? 
And so because of that, that sowing of peace and you had to make peace, right? It wasn't just something that was easily perfect, you know, and everything, because as you can see, many people brought back a bad report. So they made peace, make peace, those who make peace. And so Caleb and Joshua were the, those who make peace, right? And so they were planted amongst the newer generation who would come into the promised land, those young people, those that knew, um, new generation. So they were all the harvest of righteousness, and so it's sown in peace by those who make peace. And so they are now in the midst of the Jordan, right? You're, you're going to have to force some peace, right? You're going to have to force some belief. You're going to have to force some things to, to take place because you can look around this circumstance in the wilderness and say, this ain't right. You know, like, uh, what is going on? I, 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 so I'm sure some people didn't want to walk across the Jordan. And I'm sure some people were mumbling and complaining before they even started the journey that morning, right? Sometimes you got to make peace in order to get that harvest of righteousness. Sometimes you got to sow that seed in peace and make peace. You can't just go with what you see. It's not your own understanding um, that you are sowing this peace and you are sowing it regardless of circumstance. You're sowing it because the word says so right um one of my the ministers at my church uh said you know everything we do in the body everything that we do for the lord and and a part of this kingdom is backwards from what the world does it right the the world um sees and then believes but we have to believe first and then we will see right because we're believing to see this harvest of righteousness and it is sown in peace by those who make peace right you got to be a peacemaker you have to make peace right and then you can sow into this harvest of righteousness and you're going to get this harvest of righteousness you can't see everything that um is going to come to pass first no 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 you have to see it with your mind's eye then you will have it come to pass in reality in what we actually see amen all right, so let's read the two. Let's read this second completion verse again, in chapter three, verse eighteen. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Are you believing for righteousness to come to pass? So in peace, make peace. Sometimes it won't be easy. Sometimes you're going to have to force it, but don't cause the ground to be cursed because you refuse to do it in peace. Make peace. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful word. Lord Jesus, bless us. Help us to have a harvest of righteousness. Help us to make peace. Help us to sow in peace. Lord God, we love you, Jesus. We want to please you, Jesus. Be a part of us, be in us, be all around us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, Um, if you would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me, but more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. Lord God, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and help you make all the decisions of your life. Um, just put your trust in him. Learn to listen for his voice. It's a still small voice. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to spend time in the word, read the word, chew on the word, talk to the Holy Spirit, 
ask him questions and and wait for an answer. Learning to wait is one of the best ways to hear his voice. Um, and yeah, go out, be baptized, um, find a church home, make disciples of all men, be around other believers so you can stay sharp in the word of God. Um, and the Holy Spirit will lead you in all those things. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.